Okay, we ready? You know where you're looking? You don't have to live in pain anymore. This is the podcast where you'll learn the stories, tips, and tools to get back to your path to health. I'm Dr. J. Du, and this is Back At It with Dr. Decompression. Welcome. This is the uh, Back At It podcast with Dr. Decompression, number 28, Climbing. We got Dr. Cam back for clinical. We have a specific topic we're going to dive into. We talked about a case like we've done with clinical. We've gotten some great, uh, great feedback from the listeners. So thanks for that. That helps. Dr. Cam, say hi. How's it going, everybody? Welcome. Doc's back from San Diego. Um, hey, real quick, thank you to Powerplate USA. And thank you to Pillowize for their sponsorship. That's how um, I'm able to bring guests on like Dr. Cam and, and host this podcast. And hopefully you, the listeners, are getting some value from it. So thank you to them. Let's jump into it. Doc, what is the topic today? Uh, why don't we focus on cervical instability? Cervical instability. What do you think? Okay, I like it. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to talk about, are you going to talk about cervical instability? Why don't we both, uh, do you got any cases that come to mind? I have a, I have a, uh, gosh, I really have this lumbar one I wanted to talk about. So yeah, let's, do that. let's, let's cover both areas. So someone with a cervical issue could, could maybe benefit. I got a good neck one for you. Yeah. And then someone from a low back could benefit to see if let's maybe that. what's going on with them. Yeah. Um, you want me to go first or you want to go first? Why don't you jump in? I'll jump in. Let's do this little back case. I've got the I've got the momentum, the host momentum. Let's do it. Um, this is a this is a crazy case. We always talk about crazy cases. I guess that's what we attract with decompression. Um, I have a young girl. She's less than twenty years old. She's been having severe back pain for two years. No trauma. She had trauma when she was four. She fell off a playground a few times and broke her shoulders. No specific to the low back, which we would look for with instability. Um, gets MRIs at Kaiser. She has three large extruded discs. Three. Three large extruded discs, less than 20 years old. I've never Oof. seen that before. What did you say was the, the cause? There was no known cause. It just started happening, lower back pain, and progressively getting worse two years ago. That's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. You know, with the history, hey, any, like, did you fall? Are you in gymnastics or what, sports? Like, you would think there's going to be some sort of trauma. Anytime we're talking about an extrusion, right? Totally. And then she has yeah. three. That's, I don't get how you, how that gets that way. I was boggled and i was really diving into the history right because that's how we learn so much about the mechanism and cause i couldn't find him the only thing i could i could get out of the patient was uh two times when she was four and five she fell off a playground broke her shoulder and nothing in the back that's it okay maybe maybe um you know maybe she's in high school so her backpack's heavier she's sitting more she's texting like that could maybe spark uh, the pain. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not really thinking instability. I'm thinking something is odd to do this, but I'm not jumping to instability because there's no trauma specifically to the lower back. Right. Um, do our testing, make sure that it's safe. And then it definitely seems like it's going to be effective. So we started decompression program. We go a few sessions and anytime there's an extrusion, my first thought clinically is to really flex their legs so they're laying on their back as you know for the listeners i'll explain they're on their back and they we flex them almost like a knee to chest to open up the facets to allow that extrusion to reabsorb works very well um i'm doing this and she's feeling a little better on one leg and the symptoms start to happen on the other leg mildly mm. but something which right like that's not a that's not ideal something's going on so immediately thought, hey, I got to take some x-rays. So we do flexion extension x-rays to see if there's instability. Because anytime there's a weird symptom, I'm looking for instability, even if there's no cause. That makes sense. Just to see, 
right? And maybe there's a specific movement pattern that's not in stability that I'm looking for to change my angle on the table, whether it's mm. face down or less less flexion, something. I take it and her her L3 on four is slipping a little bit. Like, uh, that doesn't look like enough, right? Because instability is, yes, it's movement, but we're looking for a specific amount of movement forward and backwards. Right. Because even a little slippage is okay relative to the larger amount. Um, I didn't think, but even though I saw movement clinically, hey, that's probably why. So I'm going to pull her flat. For you with instability, if you have someone with lumbar instability, are you doing that too? Are you pulling them flat or how would you do that? Uh, actually, this was great advice that I had gotten from you a while back to actually try to go at a flat angle. And historically since then, that's held true. So I keep that up. So I'm always putting people flat as well. Anytime oh, I try to veer from that, it tends to bite me in the butt. So we, uh, it's, it's, a there, there's a small window that you get with these instability patients to try to actually recover the discs or, or get them to start healing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if anything, I'd say flat or maybe just a slight angle and that's about it. That's as far as I, I go with the instability cases flat or like two and a half degrees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just very small, uh, small angle. Hundred percent. So I go flat. Makes the most sense clinically. Um, as I go flat, her symptoms continue on the other leg to not subside, but to do slightly worse. There wasn't a huge. Normally, you go flat. Boom! Wow, that is amazing. Was not the so case. it actually provoked her a little bit. Provoked her even a little more. I'm like, hey, we we got to stop this. I, I got to figure this out. This doesn't make any sense historically on all the cases that I've done. I I speak, and this is this is the, this is why I want to talk about this case. Um, keep in mind, this girl she can't sleep. She wakes up three to four times a night. She can't sleep. Her mom has to help her get out of bed. She can't do any walking or activities outside of school. Like she's less than twenty years old. That doesn't make any sense, and it's awful. Um, speak with Dr. Gatterman, who is like the goat of instability, spinal instability. Right. He's the goat, right? You've talked to him too. Yep. The guy knows everything, man. That's pretty yeah. wild. He's got an answer for all this stuff. Amazing to have him in our pockets, um, to yeah. clinically to help us. So I'm talking to him. We're, we're looking on a zoom call on the instability. He's like, JD, this is rare, but here's what's going on. I'm like, Oh, this is great. What, what's going on? What is it? Yeah. You know, I'm like nerding out on this stuff. And uh, he's like, very rare. But when you think of hypermobility or, you know, everyone for the listeners, hyper, like extra energy, something increase, it's, there's too much movement. So when you have hypermobility, the joints, they slide forward and backwards. They translate. Right. This is not a translational hypermobility. Like, I'm thinking, what what do you mean? I thought that was only translational, either forward or back or side to side. What do you, what are you talking about? He says, it's very rare. The tr the instability. I'm showing the video. Sorry for the listeners, but think of it as a seesaw. So instead of sliding forward and backwards, it's teetering forward and backwards. So it's moving forward and backwards, minimal. That's why you saw it on the X-ray. But what I see through the movement patterns, guys, when we take a flexion extension film, you lean forward, snap a picture, and you lean backwards and snap a picture. And you can see how the spine moves together, how all those units move together. So it was teetering like a, like a, a teeter-totter. He's like, that's why the flat didn't work. He's like, so what you were Sorry. doing was on the right track. JD, I can't, I can't see your hands. Can you show me what you mean? Can you move the, yeah, the camera a little bit? Yeah. Instead of sliding forward and backwards, it yeah. was teetering like this. Yeah. Okay. All right. And it had a so small just rocking amount. over. Yeah. Yeah. Basically falling off the ledge. Exactly. So Wild. the flat actually closed it, which made the symptoms worse. And he's like, 
you, you're on the right track with the uh, with the flexion, but you've got to really flex it. Like, oh, interesting. 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 That's like that would be the last thing I would think to do. Like, if I do that, that's going to make this person worse. And son of unbelievable, we've gone L one, L two. Um, about three weeks into that, this patient's at least fifty percent better. Wow. She's sleeping through the night. She's going to school. Her life's not perfect, but um, they recommended a four section spinal fusion at 18 years old. And she's 50% better. And we're, we're very positive that, that that spinal fusion at 18 might not have to be her outcome. How's she feeling about things? She's so excited. I mean, yeah. to see an 18 year old that's sad and succumbed by pain and frustration it's it's heartbreaking um and to see her now like she's smiling she's she, you can just tell the joy in her in her face that sure. things are improving in her life and she doesn't have to go possibly not go through the surgery yeah yeah absolutely so um that was the story about just the different not just instability but the different types and how to how we use these decompression tables based on the images and the motion and find that little nook and cranny to get those discs to reabsorb. That's the key. That's pretty amazing, man. That's, That's really great. good. That's phenomenal diagnostic work. Uh, great detective work. And it's, it like you said, it's really very like priceless having somebody that can read images like that help you when you're feeling a little bit confused about where to go with the patient when your standard stuff isn't working the way you want you go back you turn over more stones and you find out this this new finding that we've never even encountered and then you adjust and now it's it's finally starting to gain traction again so amazing, right that's amazing yeah that's pretty cool that's honestly that's a great clinical gem uh, i'm definitely going to be looking out for that we don't, we probably don't run enough follow-up x-rays when we feel like we're getting stuck on a case. So that's, that's going to be uh we'll add that in the bag. So thank you for that. I've added it. I used to do after four weeks. Now I do two weeks. If they're not responding the way I want, I, I just jump straight to movement x-rays. It's been sense. a huge game changer. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Great call. Um, Love that, man. That's the story. I want to hear about your, your cervical case, your neck case. Yeah, so the neck case, she's a, she's an old patient of mine, okay? Uh, I hadn't seen her for five years. She comes in, she's she's like a 75-year-old woman, um, very, like, type A, just still very active, going around, running, you know, even though she, she doesn't work anymore, she's running businesses or, like, helping volunteer work okay. and stuff like that. <clears throat> so she's still very, very very active at her age and she comes in and she's got this uh, radiating pain going down her shoulder uh, into the back of her elbow. I'm like, okay. Uh, I know that pattern. Um, so she hasn't had any imaging done. We run MRIs and sure enough, we find, uh, we find that she's got some, or, or like a C7 disc bulge, C7 and C6. Okay. Sorry, they were, they were protrusions. Uh, and that's, that's not uncommon to see in the elderly, but like it, it really correlated fairly well with her, her findings. Right. So, uh, in addition to that, she, she has pretty, like her posture has been changing over time and she's really starting to slouch forward and she's very aware of it and very sensitive to it. She would like to get that, you know, changed over time. And I was like, you know, it's not a bad idea to run stress films. So that's what we call it, right? So like a Davis series, because yeah. that'll show us not only what things are like in neutral, but what's happening in those different motions because she had expressed to me, hey, when I lean forward, my symptoms get worse. And then sometimes when I turn my head, it'll also flare up my symptoms. So I'm like, okay, interesting. Let's see Does that tell you? if we can get, you know, uh, let's see what, uh, what could be happening there at that level potentially that could be irritating it. You know, are we gonna find some potential instability? So sure enough, we run the x-rays 
and she's got multiple level stepping is what they call it right so yeah. it looks like steps going down because the vertebrae have actually slid out of position and it's because of the instability normally these vertebrae should stack up on each other and be the the lines in, like in front of the the body and in the back of the body should all be flush you know and there should be some somewhat of a curve but they shouldn't be offset if they're offset then it's telling us a little bit about yeah there might be some instability so we see that and like you said this was a more traditional type of instability when we put her into flexion and we would put her into extension, there was a vertebrae C6 that was sliding forward and backwards. So C6 is so, moving forward on top of C7. Yeah, you got okay. it. So um, it was that that was the unstable spot. Uh, and we felt like, or I felt like uh, that was one of the main reasons why, because she had actually gone to PT to try to help this too. And it didn't really go smoothly, at least initially. So uh, we ran her at somewhat of a flatter angle. We did have to go slight angle with her. Um, okay, what angle? Uh, with the neck, I'm not sure what angle we're running that at because the this the table that we use for the neck is a little harder to read. I would guess it's probably four degrees, something around there. Okay, but Three, you're four, not going the 15 degrees. to 18 degrees that you would. No, do. we're we're going. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty mild, uh, very slight angle, and uh initially it was it was a little bit of a uh, task to try to figure out the right amount of weight she could handle because when you're working with these cases you have to work slow yeah. so we started very low with the weight and to a point where she couldn't even really feel it and we worked her up and sometimes she would get a little sore and then we'd keep her there and then we'd you know slowly just graduate her from over time and now she's doing a very uh what we consider like more of a therapeutic way where it's actually going to pull that disc back into position and make things better. And we did follow-up films actually with her instability as we were moving through this. And not only did her curve get better, but the joint is no longer, that C6 is no longer moving around as much as it was. So it decreased how much. What? Yes, yeah, so that was pretty wild. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we now I should preface that in tandem with this, we did laser, we did stem, but more importantly than that, we we had a couple. Uh, we do uh, some weighted exercise or isometrics with patients. Okay. With instability. Uh, with her, we had a a front weight that was very light, like one pound, and we would have her use that before she would go, go do her traction. Her sorry, her decompression before and the got decompression. Her, before the decompression. Before the decompression. Why before? Uh, so just to get them active, and then uh, we put her on the decompression to to get uh, to make sure because sometimes when you're doing these exercises, it compresses things, right? So just to get enough to activate the muscles and then create the space again, so that things would you know feel a little more relaxed after she did the activity. Because sometimes when we switch the order. They're, they're feeling like they're a little bit tight afterwards okay. and they don't like the tension that they have in there. Okay. Doc, um, are those so that's, the that's how we're weights? Them. Yeah. They're the pedal. Yeah. Weights. You got yeah. We have that yeah. too. So you're putting the weight on the, were you putting the hat on them and you're putting the weight in the front? Yeah. You got yep. it. Yeah. So when we found that that was the recipe when we coupled the two together and we were able to gain some headway. And then over time, uh, now she's at a point where she's actually seeing a physical therapist too. And her exercises are, she's responding well to them. So it's, you know, that, that progression, moving them along that spectrum. Can you, I, I totally get what you're saying for the listeners. Can you explain doc, explain why the isometric exercises are so crucial with instability? So there are only a few structures that help keep our, our bones in place, right? One of them is what we call soft tissues like ligaments and tendons okay mm -hmm. those but especially ligaments they're they're going to keep the structures in alignment they're going to help do that okay and if they get sprained or torn things are going to shift okay and those are a little harder to heal up or recover effectively because they don't have really good blood flow yeah. Yeah. So you'll hear about that. You know, people have ACL pairs and all, all sorts of other soft tissue injuries. 
and they don't heal up quite as effectively and people are, you know, never the same again. But those people, so, so there's another structure that actually helps keep these joints in place and that's muscle. Yep. So, uh, and they found many times like people can have really crazy soft tissue injuries and because their muscular structures are so strong, it keeps things into position and keeps them from hurting and allows them to do sometimes all the activities they could do, even, you know, if they were feeling like that all the tissues were healthy. So when we do an isometric, we're engaging those muscles, those small intrinsic muscles that attach the bones, the larger ones that attach throughout the whole neck, all of those muscles have to engage to keep the structure in good position. So that's one of the nice parts also about activating the muscles in a, in a way that the body is going to take to. It's going to actually help. It's actually going to help establish or reestablish the curve as well. So that's the really cool part. And that's why a traditional, say the, the PT originally doing muscle strengthening on the surrounding muscles was probably unsuccessful in this case. Yeah, it was just, uh, my, what I would suspect just on a basic level, yeah, it was irritating the tissues. It just wasn't the right thing at that time. The sequencing was, more, was off. Yeah, sequencing was off. Yeah. You needed to switch the order up a bit. You needed to get the inflammation down. You needed to get the disc into better position. And then that allowed you for more opportunity to strengthen, stabilize. 100%. So, yeah. I think that's important when you're when you're talking to patients like, hey, this might not be the wrong, this is the right thing. We just have to do the, the right things in the right order to get the results that we're talking about. Exactly. That's what it is. It's not as bad. It's just not bad right now. Yep. You got it, Doc. Yeah. Makes so much sense. Um, so how's this patient doing now? She's doing great. So she's got no pain. Uh, that's that's all gone. Now she just does maintenance because, you know, she is older. Mm -hmm. And she does have a little bit of arthritis in those areas. And we want to try to keep those discs as healthy as possible. So she's coming in for her. It's, it's once a week. That's like her sweet spot. You know, she'll start to feel a little bit of tension creep up by the end of the week. And she's like, okay, it's time to get stretched or, you know, get this decompressed. And uh, we just keep going with all the other modalities too, just to try to keep things as optimized as possible. She's, like I said, very high functioning. She wants to stay that way. So she wants to do everything that she can to keep her quality of life. So yeah, we're, uh, we're big fans of her. And is she still having the elbow numbness or pain in the neck stuff or no. she's doing, she's doing, no, really no, well. no. All the nerve stuff is gone. Wow. Neck tension is like for the most part, zero, no pain. Uh, she feels great. Yeah. Amazing. She's doing everything. Yeah. She's really cool. What a cool story, man. Yeah. What an amazing change in her life. Yeah. Gosh, this stuff's awesome. You know, it's crazy when you watch it change. Oh my So gosh. much stuff. And then you saw the change. It's not, this isn't just fairy dust where, oh, she's feeling better. You know, just like you take Advil. Like you saw the actual change on a, on a flexion extension film that the instability was less and that the body was, was handling that instability better. Hence the sim fixing the cause. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. And it's like, uh, like you're saying, these, both our cases, these didn't go smooth. Mm -hmm. We ran into bumps in the road. The patients were, were confident that we were going to figure it out, they, you know, and we really made sure to do the detective work to figure out what were those missing pieces, what we needed to switch in order to get them over the hump. Yeah. You know, it's never the same box protocol. No and, one's getting the same exact treatment. Yeah. And then when you walk in, you see the tables, they're all kind of legs in the air. You don't know the difference between 12 degrees or 10 degrees when you're looking at those tables. Yeah. You let us worry about it. You guys don't have to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, let us do the dirty work. Um, anything else about instability? Um, you know, I think maybe in a future uh, episode, maybe we can talk a little bit more about uh, some of the regenerative injections. Okay. That I, th I feel like that's like a whole episode in itself, because uh, a lot of these patients will end up seeking that stuff out, and they're probably just uh, there's a lot of information about that stuff that people should be aware of, uh, so that they're educated, and then they can decide, you know, what what's going to be good for them. 
or what they're comfortable with. Yeah. I like but that. It's a, it's a very interesting field. And um, yeah, I definitely would like to that deep dive in that more in the future. Let's bring that on the next pod on our next clinical. Let's do it. Sound good? I think it's a great idea. Um, let's just summarize from what I gathered from that is, hey, my case, there's instability, but there's different types of instability and knowing how to use the tables to, to fix that is crucial. Um, and on your case, knowing that there's instability and identifying is important and how you sequence the isometric exercises before the table, which is unique. Uh, yeah to get the benefits and seeing the change on a post flexion extension film is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah wow. To change the game. wow. Game changer. Really a game changer. Hey, um, before we wrap up, thanks to our sponsors, pillow wise and power plate. Thank you. And um, thanks Dr. Cam remind everyone doc, how do they find you if they're in the San Diego greater area and they want to check out this these decompression magical unicorn tables that you have well we're uh we're in sereno valley and you can always google us uh san diego chiropractic neurology uh we're also on youtube instagram same thing sd chiro neuro okay SD and chiro neuro. otherwise you can always give us a text or call us 619 3440111 We'll add that here. One last thing. I was just thinking to tell everyone if they're in San Diego, um, you're doing something to your office, right? Are you downsizing the office? Are you reducing the, the size of the office or what are you doing? We there? definitely just blew out a wall and <laughs> kind of <laughs> got a whole nother suite. So yeah, we're expanding. Uh, we're very grateful. Uh, this should allow us to help a lot more people. Uh, we need more equipment, more help, more of everything. So this is, this is perfect timing. If yeah, you're in the area, excited. if you're in the area, check them out. They're doing amazing things with spinal decompression. So, um, Doc, thanks again as always. We appreciate the insight, and um, we'll have Doc back on in a few weeks for some regenerative medicine information. Sound good? Let's do it, man. Okay, very excited. Thanks everyone for listening. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, click below to subscribe, and don't forget to like us on YouTube and on Instagram. Thanks, everyone. This is Back At It with Dr. Decompression. Thanks. Take care.